A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believe. Therefore, I spoke. We too believe and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are indeed glad. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing carrying their sheaves. Those who sow in tears shall rejoice them. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ shall reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ shall reign. Hallelujah. I choose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. The Prince of Peace is the Prince of Peace, is the mighty God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Reign. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Commanded these two sons of mine, sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? 
They said to him, we can. He replied, my chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and my left, and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make the authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, as I said in the introduction, which was more like my reflection on the readings, today we celebrate St. James the Great to distinguish him from St. James the Lesser or the Less. He was brother of St. John, the beloved disciple, the evangelist. He, his brother, John, and their father, Zebedee, were fishermen. When the Lord, in Matthew's gospel, saw them at the beach, he said, follow me, and they followed him. They left everything, including their dad, and followed him. Because of the love Jesus had for them, he and his brother, along with Peter, became the members of the inner circle. In other words, they were with Jesus at critical moments of his life. For example, on Mount Tabor, when Jesus' Jesus' face was transfigured, James and his brother John and Peter were there. When the synagogue official Jairus asked Jesus to come and raise his daughter to life. Jesus took along James, John, and Peter. So Jesus brought them close to himself, not because they were special or because they were holier than everybody else. No, in fact, John and James were known as the sons of thunder. They had a tendency to be extremely angry and vindictive. You remember one time a village, a Samaritan village would not allow Jesus to pass through. And they said, Lord, do you want us to call fire from heaven to consume them? That was how they were. But Jesus loved them because they were also loyal and faithful to him. After the resurrection ascension of Jesus, following the Pentecost experience, he, along with the other 11, preached the good news of salvation. And as fate would have it, he was the first to be martyred. He was killed, and the story is that the public prosecutor converted to Christianity because of James's witness during his trial, and he died with that man. Today we celebrate him because his life teaches us that no matter who we are, God has a plan for us. What is important is to, is to follow him faithfully. And not to worry about our shortcomings, because we do have many shortcomings. His grace will always supply. 
His grace will make up for what is lacking in our individual lives. My final comment before I sit down is or has to do with something that has been going on for quite some time, especially since I've been here. And I want to mention that because I've dealt with it quietly, but it's not working, so I have to bring it up in the open. And it has to do with observing silence around the church, especially one hour before Mass. This is a sacred space, and there is something in Catholicism known as sacred silence. Before the Lord, you and I have no words to say. All that we can do as a way of praying is to be silent before the Lord. As a church, we have different spiritualities. Being a member of the Charismatic Renewal is one. Being a member of the Sacred Heart is one. Vincent de Paul is one. St. Anthony is one. Legion of Mary is one. Different spiritualities, but everybody must have a place in this church. And the way we ensure that everybody has a place in this church, in this sacred space, is to always observe this sacred silence, recognizing that Jesus is ensconced, glor beautifully ensconced, beautifully seated on his throne, represented by the tabernacle in the main church, but also the, the, the monstrance in the chapel. And so it is written boldly on the side of the church where this, the, 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 the chapel is, the Blessed Sacrament Chapel is below the window. Please maintain silence. Unfortunately, over and over again, one hour before Mass, you have people standing on top of the chapel, making a lot of noise. And yet you see people come in with their rosaries, people praying their office. I pray my office when I come, so I'm walking the compound. Tell you, keep quiet. Don't do that. Yes, I'm all for people praying, but not for making too much noise, because actually you can be silent and still scream. If you don't know, you can still be silent and scream. At the end of the day, when you pray, you don't pray to me. You pray to God who is not deaf. So it's important to recognize that and to have respect for authority, but also consideration for your fellow human being who is coming to pray, who is coming to engage the Lord. So please, please, it's disobedient do something which is wrong and you have been told over and over and over again because I still see the same people or some of the same people doing the same thing. And I'm happy to say though that there are some people who when I talk, spoke to them one time, they never repeated that. Then the other one is disobedient spirit. Disobedient spirit is associated with Lucifer, the devil. He was thrown out of heaven because he was disobedient. So whenever we are disobedient in relation to sacred things, in relation to liturgy, in relation to ways of worship, we are acting like agents of Lucifer. Today, as we celebrate St. James, he who was humble was obedient to the call of Jesus, follow me. And he left everything to follow Jesus. My prayer is that the group will know that to be able to make it to heaven, it is important to submit to the authority of God that is mediated by the leaders of the church. When I go to heaven, simply put, obey. It is the reason, it is this lack of obedience, this disobedient spirit that did not allow the charismatic renewal in Ghana and, especially, and also elsewhere to grow. 
That's the reality. Let us pray. Yes. Let us pray for our holy and perfected leaders in the church that they may be obedient to the Lord's commands, like Jeremiah, teaching and exhorting God's people according to his desires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may no longer be forgetful of the God who gave birth to all and who holds us in being, so that we will not have to endure having hide him his face from us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us in death, that they may know the complete fulfillment of good and expansion of God's kingdom in their heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may faithfully plant our master seeds and mix the yeast into our flour according to the kingdom of God to work its miracle of abundant good in our midst. Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. our prayer. And for all the intentions, we hold the silence of our hearts. For all these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Savior, you have called us to follow you as you call St. James. Give us your grace to always say yes to your call. You will live and reign forever and ever.